Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Conversations with Corel. I am Corel. Welcome to 104. Uh, I mean, what I mean is that I believe this week the election will pretty much be de- determined. And so this week will be my last four daily Monday through Thursday shows. And then I'll go on a production break and come back with a weekly television show uh, January 15th, 2021, which is only five short weeks to produce it. Uh, and I hope you're going to like it and I hope you're going to love it and I hope you're going to stay and support it. Uh, but it's happening. So this week will be the Monday through Thursday half hour. And then starting the week after we will just have updates via Patreon and via social media. And then I'll be producing, uh, both life and segments season five, uh, and the Dorian's TV or film toast 2021. Very exciting. All right. Speaking of exciting Saturday was my birthday and I was talking to DW and Yvonne uh, on the the FaceTime. And uh, that's when NBC finally projected or finally called uh, the Electoral College uh, for Joseph Biden. Uh, And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the president-elect and uh, vice president-elect of the United States of America. And... That was an incredible birthday present. Indeed, President Barack Obama was reelected on my birthday. And now this. And to say that a nation cried, that a nation rejoiced, that a world uh, rejoiced, that a world uh, really responded. On Der Spiegel, the German Time magazine, they showed on the left Trump uh, cutting off the head of the Statue of Liberty and replacing it with his own. And on the right, they showed Joe Biden replacing her head uh, back on top of her body. That's how the world sees this. So the lack of concession doesn't matter. And for those of you worried that he may actually win in some of these states where there's recounts or whatever, he will not. Uh, Because the, now I thought he would win, but, you know, legally, meaning with the votes. He doesn't have them. Sure, recounts may find discrepancies, but they're not going to find tens of thousands or 5,000 or t- it's not going to happen. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to be the president, vice president, unless there is some sort of coup. And that could occur. He just fired his, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, not chief of staff, but well, it's in the news. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to look it up. I, it's something you would do if you're planning a coup and Congress needs to pay close attention to him. But There's not much we can do right now. He is going to have COVID rallies. Let him. Let him have his rallies. They're not going to overturn the vote. They're going to spread COVID. They're going to die. So let him have their rallies. Let them be the Pied Pipers right down. You know what? I'm tired. And I want to be clear about reconciliation. Reconciliation after a political campaign occurs when there's two credible candidates for office of the president in the campaign. You know, Biden or uh, uh, Bush conceding to Obama. Uh, Or I'm sorry, McCain conceding to Obama. Uh, Bush was termed out, thank God. Uh, Bush, you know, or uh, again, I want to say Bush, but uh, McCain conceding to Obama. Um, George Herbert Walker Bush uh, conceding to Bill Clinton. Um, These are nice, but these are people that, while I disagreed vehemently with their policy, they weren't fascist who had installed other fascists uh, who had taken this huge power grab of our nation. So I think we need to revisit the reconciliation conversation because I, for one, do not believe that we need to reconcile with these people at all. Uh, I really do not. I really feel it is up to them to come to the party. Either you come to the party and you decide if you really, it's, it's not up to us to reconcile with people It's up to us to ask them, do you want to be an American? Because Joe Biden has made it clear that he wants to be an American president and he wants to be president of all states and all people. Now, do you want to be one of those people? If you do not, that's a valid answer, but get the hell out. Have your state secede or you leave. But it is now time to start telling these people that. That if you're so radical that for four years all you're going to do is obstruct and deny and whatever, we don't need you. And trying to reconcile with those people, don't. Okay, just don't. Because there is no reconciliation with those people. They don't want it. And they're not worthy of it. 
If Donald Trump truly was and is the biggest threat to the American democracy, if his followers truly are some of the most despicable and worst that America has to offer, why would we want to claim them, acknowledge them, reconcile with them? It is up to them to come to the party. It is up to them to change. It is up to them, not us, to do a thing. We are not the ones that are out there denouncing everybody, demeaning everybody, trying to vote for racism. We're not out there acting like some divine power is talking through us in some strange language on behalf of this savior named Trump. We are not insane. We are not the armed people that are intimidating people. We are not the people that need to do anything. Okay, we need to get to the business at hand, so y'all need to get the F out the way. That's what we need to be talking about. Now, I'm sorry Joe Biden is not that person. I am. So I am telling you, as anyone but a MAGA supporter, if you are anything but a MAGA supporter, you owe them nothing. They owe you everything. Because for four years, they have let fascism take hold. And now they are literally trying to dismantle the American democratic system and make it a court-based system with judges that they have installed. That is fascism. And anyone that supports that is un-American. And so you don't have to reconcile with people that are not Americans. And they, these MAGA supporters are proving they don't want to be Americans. They want to be MAGAs. Fine. Let them. Let them. But let them do it somewhere else. If states, red states, need to start seceding to make a home for these people, then let them. But stop acting like we owe them something. We owe them nothing. You know what? They should be grateful we're not going to round them all up and put them in re-education camps like he wanted to do with his patriotic education. He literally wanted to turn our schools into to fascist education camps. Well, you know what? They're lucky we don't make them have some patriotic re-education. They were all for it. How about we tell the maggots? You were all for patriotic education when Donald Trump was doing it. Well, guess what? We're going to give you some now. See how they'd like it then. Stop acting like we owe them anything but decency. That's it. Be decent to them. Don't run them over with your vehicles. Don't run them off the road like they have other people. Don't do to them what they have done and want to do to you. That's all we owe them. We won't treat you like you've been treating us. And that's it. That's all we owe you. But reaching out a hand to you, why? You mofos have bitten it far too many times. Try to embrace you, why? You have thrown off our hugs. Try to protect you from coronavirus, why? You have proven too stupid to protect yourselves. No, we owe you nothing. And in fact, we just saved your asses, okay? We just made sure there's going to be a country in four years. So you all, all you maggots, owe us a debt of gratitude. Because your guy was on the path to destroy everything that you need. Medicare, health care, all of it. He was about to take it all away. And now we have saved it. So all we would like from you is a thank you, not a court challenge. We would like you to actually be part of the healing process, not rallying at voter centers and harassing poll workers. Learn what it is to truly be an American or stop being one. Tell your state you don't want to be part of America anymore and secede. But stop bothering us and stop acting like we have to pay attention. Math of America, baby. Math of America. 70 million people voted for Donald Trump. Out of 322 million Americans, that means 350 or 252 Americans did not vote for Donald Trump. 252 million. And out of the remaining 252 million, 75 million people now voted for Joe Biden. So that means that about 175 million Americans couldn't give a rat's crap either way. So please stop acting like MAGA is some huge force to be reckoned with. They're 21% of the population. 
Okay? That's a gnat on the ass of America. 21%. One fifth. One out of five Americans is a maggot. Come on. Now y'all are saying, well, Carell, those 180 million that aren't anything, you know, they might believe with him. Well, luckily, some are too young to believe anything and some are too old where their beliefs don't matter, truly, because they're in nursing homes or nearly dead. So let's, add, let's take, you know, 50, 60 million there. And that leaves about 100 million Americans that don't vote either way that want to be out of the process. Okay. You think they have a strong opinion about Trump? Did it get them to the polls? No, then they don't have a strong opinion about Trump. Neither do they have one about Biden, but so what? So what? At least they don't have one about Trump. Not enough to get their ass to the polls. So stop acting like MAGA is the entire half of the nation. It is not. It is less than 71 million people, which is less than 21% of the country. So they're not a plurality, plurality. They're not a majority and they can't say the word or spell plurality. So use it around them a lot because they're not, they're not. And yes, they're vocal and dangerous. They are very dangerous. I'm not saying ignore them. I'm saying we, we need to consider them the national security threat that they are. MAGA is a terrorist group. It is a terrorist group that wants to stop vote counting in a democracy, wants to... It, the things that the MAGA cult is doing, according to international voting watchers, would be reported as violations in any other country. They're the ones shooting things. Kyle Rittenhouse has gotten more sympathy tweets and more acceptance tweets, the guy that shot people from the Republicans, than Joe Biden has. They're a terrorist organization. Let's just classify them one and move on. Germany did. If you're a member of MAGA, you're a member of a terrorist organization. You want to stop legal vote counting. You want to intimidate. You want to bear arms to intimidate. You have threatened open violence. Donald Trump Jr. has said, and yet no cities are burning to the ground. He said that. Donald Trump Jr., the head of MAGA, wants to see American cities burn to the ground because his father has not been reinstalled dictator. That's a terrorist group. So 70% of America belongs to a terrorism organization and their mouthpiece is Fox News. Fox News is the, and OAN and Newsmax. These things are the mouthpieces of this terrorist organization. And when we start treating Fox News that way, when we start treating OAN as a terrorist organization's mouthpiece, they will be shut down because that's what they are. So in the new year with the new presidency, let's strip away everything that the media and has protected these people. The media has protected Fox News. The media has protected Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity. These are despicable traitors to the United States trying to tear down our very democracy. The media is protecting Newt Gingrich. This man needs to be thrown in jail for sedition. There are laws against what they're peddling on Fox News. That's not freedom of speech, it's sedition. Telling someone to raise arms, to burn down cities, against a U the U.S. government as it plays out its process, that's sedition. So let's just start using the words and doing the math. MAGA is 70 million people. That is simply one-fifth of America. Let's ask, here, if you don't believe me, where's Alexa? Alexa, darling. Alexa, what's the population of America? Come on now, give it to me. Mm -hmm. According to, it is, yes, yes, mm hmm is 327 million people, okay? So let's ask her this. Alexa, 70 million is what percent of 327 million? Mm -hmm. Here it comes, here it comes, give it to 21.4%, that's what MAGA is. That's the, Do yes, that's the Donald Trump movement. Okay, 21% of America is the Donald Trump movement. 21%, baby. So now you're like, well, what's the Joe Biden percent? Okay, let's ask. Alexa, 75 million is what percent of 327 million? Let's get this math going, baby. Come on, girl. Come on. 22.9%. So that's, okay, 22 and 21. So let's, let's just round 22 and 23. That's 45% of the country that's wahoo for Trump or wahoo for Biden. 
65% of the country, not Wahoo for either. Either can't vote, doesn't vote, too young, too old, or doesn't care. So the notion that anyone, including Biden, is the voice of the country is ridiculous. It's re and look, I'll, I will say that progressives are not the voice of the nation. But I am not claiming that if MAGA isn't the voice of the nation, then progressives are. No, 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 no. I am simply telling you that when someone says MAGA is half the country, it's not. It's 21.4% of the country. And yes, progressives right now are only about 22% of their 23% of the country. Okay, so of the voting block, MAGA is half, but that is not half the country. We've got to start thinking of all Americans, okay? We do, because that's who a president is the president for, all Americans. We have to start thinking of America. You have to start, you know, stop thinking red and blue and think shades of purple. You know, California is a, a bright, bright purple. It's almost blue, but it's not totally. You know, no state is totally blue or red. They're purple and they're different shades of the purple. But that purple, that whole map of purple, whether it's light purple, dark purple, that's America. One purple nation, Prince would be happy. So let's ignore the red and the blue and let's talk about everything in between because that's what you do when you, have, when you want to average something. You throw out the top, you throw out the bottom and then you get add up the rest and divide by however many. Did that just go over y'all's head? Y'all remember how to average, right? If you've got 10 numbers, you throw out the highest number, the lowest number, and then you, then you add up the other eight numbers and divide them by 10 and there you have the average. Jeez. Oh, Math, honey, math. So, you know, even the news, they don't stop to do the math when they're talking about MAGA. And the international press keeps writing, half of America deeply divided. America deeply divided. America is not deeply divided, okay? America is not deeply united either. That's the other myth, okay? There are 180 million people that stay out of the effing process for whatever reason. Whether they're too old, too sick, they don't want to be in it. Okay, only... Of 327 million people, only in this election, 145 or 150 million voted. That's it. That's still 168 plus million people that didn't vote, that aren't in the process. So yes, a quarter of America is deeply divided with the other quarter of America. The other half could give a rat's. We don't know what they care about. They're kids, they're old, or they're, out of the, they're just out of the process. We don't know where they're at. Stop speaking for them and stop acting like the one quarter of Democrats and one quarter of Republicans speak for them too. That's the biggest effing problem of all the candidates. No one goes after those 160 million people. Everybody just plays and panders to their base, tries to expand it a little bit, but does, I would go door to door. If I were gonna run in four years for anything, I would find out who the people are that don't vote. And I would go to their houses and their communities. I'd say, why don't you vote? What can I do to get you out here to vote? What is it that would motivate you enough to get to the polls? You know, is it that you can't do it with your phone? Is it that it's just too hard to vote? Is it, you know, what is it? Why aren't you participating? You know, but they don't want that. They just want to pander to who they got because look at the numbers. Because you can win with 23% of the country. You know, I'm always amazed in Long Beach, California, where I used to live, uh, how little people win huge offices with. Like in the second district, there was a, that's a big district there, very important district. There was a new council person being elected. The winner got 7,800 votes. The loser got like 5,500 votes. That's like 13,000 votes between them. And they spent lots of money to get those. The mayor there won. Garcia, who you see in the press all the time, he got like 35,000 votes. He won by 35,000 votes in a city of 500,000. Not, not a mandate at all. Uh, but the, the margins are so low because people just don't turn out. And even in this election, how they're talking about historic numbers of voters, there's still a historic numbers that aren't. You know, I don't know if there's a figure online about how many Americans are actually eligible to vote. Not that are registered, but are eligible. I guess we could ask um, Alexa. 
How many Americans are between the ages of 18 and 80? I don't think she's going to know this. Mm, maybe. Come on. Mm. 253 million. Mm. So 253 million people in the United States are over 18. Wow. Out of 327. So that's like 70 million kids or people under the age of 18. That's a lot. That's a lot if you think about it. Uh, Okay. So out of 250 million people over the age of 18, that's how many can vote. 250 million. So, So that means that in this election, this record election, 105 million eligible people did not vote. And that's a mandate. That's like Trump's America that, or Biden's America, really. You know, it still really is just the people that show up's America. That's really whose America it is. I guess that really does show you. If you don't show up, it's not your country. Because the people that show up are the ones making the decisions for these other 100 million people who could actually vote. I don't know how they stomach that. I, I really don't. I don't know how any person could have the right to vote and express their opinion and then not do it. I don't, I, that, of course, well, you know me. Uh, all right, enough about that. I believe Joseph, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to be the president. More importantly, I've already followed the first dogs on Twitter. They have their own account, Champ, uh, Champ and, Champ and, oh, I'll, I'll learn it. Uh, Chief and Champ or Champ and Chief or whatever. That's first underscore dogs underscore USA. That's the official. They already have 140,000 Twitter followers. They just joined today. Let's make them have more than Donald Trump. That would kill him. So if you don't have a Twitter account, go get one just to follow the first dogs. Uh, Champ and I'll I'll find it out. All right. I did on this. uh, You know, we are going to be moving ahead Uh, after this week. I'm going to be taking the risk of doing a weekly video program for you. A one hour weekly video program instead of a daily 30 minute thrown together program which a lot of hosts have been doing right now, and that's why I'm not doing it anymore. No offense to any of them. They do it great. House Sparks is great. They're all great. They're all great. That's why I don't need to do this anymore. You've got a lot of great people to hear. I need to go do what they can't, okay? I can do things House Sparks can't. I, I can do things John Fugel saying can't, meaning I have a production company available to me, and I have the experience of five years of doing a television show. So I can very easily launch into a production of one and maybe Hal and, and John and the others, they can. I'm not calling them out. But Hal probably could get a budget and do one. I mean, he's, you know, he's a star. Uh, I'm just saying that th- I have technology available to me that I have been using that will allow me to do something. And I have other interests that, than they do. You know, I, I'd rather talk to you about cooking and eating and, and, and health and well-being and issues that you can really uh, change your life like this, Okay. So as we move forward into 2021, and as we all are thinking now, maybe there is a future. Um, And I I think a lot of people feel that way now, that maybe there is a future. I want to show you the most important tool to my um, staying during the pandemic sane. And prior to that, the most important tool to me, having the routine and having the structure that a lot of you say, I don't know how you do it, Carell. This is it. And I don't want to hear about digital, okay? This is a day planner, and I fill it out every single week for everything that I'm doing that week or that I need to do. For instance, today I need to do one of four. That's this, one of the last four daily things, because I'm taking that very seriously. A lot of you think me just moving to the TV show is no big deal for me. Leaving a daily, daily thing. It's been 30 years that I've done a daily, daily thing. I just did the TV show and stuff extra. Uh, So this is going to be big. So today, of course, look what I block out on it. Look, you see the, the, the pink there? That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because you've got to put that in your day planner. You're like, what? Yes, put when you're eating. You know, what time? I'm already making food behind me. Put when you're eating, okay? So today I'm doing this. I'm doing lunch. I'm doing the Dorian's Dish, a new TV show you're all going to be seeing, 30 Minutes. Uh, tomorrow's scheduled and then on Wednesday I'm doing the website uh, for myself and Dorian Dish. I have a neurology appointment on the 13th. Uh, on Thursday, bye to the daily podcast after 25 years. Uh, that's in there. Uh, goals for the week, Dorian's Dish. Get the Dorian's up on Amazon. End the daily show and uh, transfer it to video. Uh, begin Dorian uh, film productions. 
and begin life and sex, uh, segment productions. This, this is all in my day planner for the week. Any calls I have to make, all of it. If you don't have an actual physical day planner, get yourself one. Okay, get one of these. If you don't have one of these, get it. I like the one that has the days, okay? I, I am the digital queer, and I have not found one of these digitally that does the same for me as this. Write it down. There's power in bringing something into the world. Write down your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Even just the times, if you don't know what you're going to have or where you're going to be. Write down, you know, when you're going to do laundry. R write down, you know, all the things you're going to be doing, even if it's just household chores. Write them down when you're, and give yourself some structure. I'm up, I'm, I've eaten breakfast by this time. You know, then I'm going to move into this and, and have it all here in front of you. And then if you ever get lost during the day, if you ever get on, you know, if, you're if you lose your focus, if the, the events of the day start to overwhelm you, you refer to your day planner and say, oh, well, I'm supposed to be doing this right now. And then start doing it. It's a lifesaver. I'm telling you, get a day planner, please, for yourself. You will love it. All right, I am Carell. Be who you want to be, so I don't hurt anybody. Uh, congratulations to us all. I think we pulled this. I was convinced he was going to win. And now I'm only 99, I'm 99% sure that Joseph Biden and Kamala, 98% uh, sure that Joseph Biden and Kamala will be the president, vice president. Uh, I leave that 2% in there because it is 2020. Uh, so, but I feel that we've won and that the tone will change. And it's, isn't it marvelous how... It's taken all the oxygen away from them. Every word, every tweet is not being covered. Every, you know, it, it, he's floundering and no one's paying attention now. And we don't have to give him air. We can now shut, and the media has now given themselves permission to stop obsessing over him and his every fart. Now that makes him dangerous, but at the same time, isn't it wonderful that there's something else in the air that we're talking about Joe Biden's uh, COVID team that he just announced of incredible scientists and people who will really craft a plan for us. Yes, a national mask mandate. It's about damn time. You know, this is a virus. Yes, there may be a vaccine that comes. You have to take it twice. It has to be at sub-freezing temperatures. It's problematic at best, but at least something's coming. You know, so as I said, let's start remembering that MAGA is one fifth of the country. We don't have to pay attention to them. There is four fifths of the country to pay attention to. We don't have to pay attention to them, nor do we have to give them more leeway. And police, you need to stop protecting them. You need to stop being on their side, police. The time it's changing. And if you don't think that people will come for you, meaning your jobs and defunding your police departments because they see that you are constantly supporting these people, they will. So if you want those budgets to keep flowing, I suggest police, you start being fair and you defend all Americans. All right. Because I think most police are fair. I think, and I do, I, and I know I'm white, but I am gay, but I will tell you this. I think that just like one fifth of the country is MAGA. When you look at the police, about 20% or one-fifth are not good. But four-fifths, some cities, maybe half. But still, even half, you know, are, are good people. So I really believe every time that you see these cops defending uh, the maggots, that other cops are thinking to themselves, I wish they wouldn't do that. All right, I love you bunches. Uh, I am, of course, Carell, and you be who you want to be. So long as it doesn't hurt anybody, don't forget to follow me at social media. It's at Really Carell. Uh, really Carell is on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, all of it. Go follow me. Go, go, go.